Good afternoon, everyone. It's been fun. We've been sitting around here chatting about our anticipation of fall and all the colors and the cooler temperatures. But really what we're here to talk about are payment plans in A-Square. As some of the courses you offer to students might be at that price point that giving them kind of the option to make payments over time may allow more students to participate, they find it more convenient, a little less overwhelming. And I think about those larger certificate programs, or maybe you've got some uh, trips that you take, or even some of the summer kids camps. I'm interested to know how many of you here today are already allowing some payment plans for your courses. Raise your hands if you are. And can you, oh, yeah, great, great. And if you um, don't mind sharing, you might put pop in the chat there the kind of courses that you are offering payment plans for. I'm very curious in the chat. And if you see some of those, Cheryl, let me know what they're saying. But we've got, we got a good representation here. Summer camps, summer camps, oh, paralegal studies. Very good. Yeah, great, great. There's some good stuff out there. Thanks for sharing. Now, you have always had the option in Student Manager to set up payment plans. And so today I'm going to do a quick kind of a review or overview in case there's a few of you in the group that have not done that before. We'll do a quick flyover of what's already there. And then we're going to review this brand new feature that was recently released to allow students to set up their own payment plans in ACEWEB while they're registering and then pay for those invoices in their ACEWEB account. Because we all know that the more self-service options you can give to your customers, <laughs> the less time you and your ever dwindling team spend on the phones with customers. So this staffing crisis, very real thing. Raise your hand if you're kind of in that mix. I know there's some, I see some on the list that are celebrating that they are getting to hire new people. But yes, we've got people that are struggling. We're doing more with less all of the time. So anytime we can find a way or you present us with a way or an idea that we can take some of that burden off of you, we're going to do that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And then you'll have a chance for some um, questions and answers. Try to put uh, Cheryl, on the, Cheryl on the spot. Hey, how would you like that, Cheryl? We're going to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a quick review. This is going to look very familiar to many of you if you have been already behind the scenes kind of manually with a little assistance from technology of uh, setting up those payment plans. So you know that after you're putting a student in the course and you get to the payment screen there, that you are going to select this as a billing type of payment, and you're going to then select payment plan for the system to prompt you through how many payments and how many installments you're going to want to make for this class. And the system defaults to three, but like in all of ACEWARE, you're in, you're in charge of that. You can allow the number of payments that you're wanting to to set up for those students. And then once you're done, in here, here's these edits. It calculates for you. It gets the date of billing. It gets the amount they're going to be billed. And again, you're able to set those payment plans up and do some manipulating in here. If you want to manipulate the dates or the amount, you can do that. This is a fairly new function, this being able to print a view for the students to see before you kind of finalize that and then by clicking OK, it'll save that payment plan. Now, I would like to take a look behind the scenes. And so I'm going to share a new screen here. 
Hopefully you are now seeing my student manager. Let's take a look. You are. So let's come into a masking. Let's get into a course instead of a name. That will help. We're going to come into this Mastering Student Manager course. We don't have anybody in here right now. So I'm going to add myself to the course. And so I've got myself put in the course there. And to set up payments, as we mentioned, you're going to go to Payment Type. You're going to select Billing. And then you're going to choose the payer information. And for this course, I'm going to take care of that myself. I'm going to click the payment plan. Let's go ahead and leave it at three. Again, you can adjust these, the dates. You can print it. I'll let you take a look at what that looks like. And then I can click OK. And we have those um, billing records set up. Now, uh, on this screen there, if I want to assign an invoice number to this particular invoice, I can do that here and do the payment process. So that's what is in the system now. Raise your hand if this is new to you. I'm just curious. Is this new to you? Cheryl, are you seeing any hands? Oh, yeah. Good. Good, Amy. Okay. Amy, Kat, good. So hopefully now you've got you've got that option, but we're here today. Then uh, we are going to take a look then at what's new and upcoming. You're seeing my last screen, and we're going to. I also want to show you something else that was new to the behind the scenes payment. You saw in the previous screen where I clicked that create invoice. There is a new preference now that you can set up in your preferences on the pay tab right here. This assign those invoice numbers for the number of payments. With this click, I would not have to go through each of those billing records and assign an invoice to it. Another way to save you time, all of the invoice numbers would have been filled in for me. So a couple of new features that came this year, one, the kind of the preview for the student, and two, this ability to sign an invoice number for those payment plans. All right, the payment plan module. We received a number of requests from customers um, wanting users to set up their payment plans at the time of registration. Now, when I first heard that, I kind of, my mind went boom. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm not sure I want students to have this much control. You know, let's pay 50 cents a month for eternity. That's the first thing I thought. But I, we decided, let's go to the users. Let's go to those who are requesting this. And we set up a focus group from a different variety of institutions providing continuing ed. And we had an amazing meeting where they gave us kind of their scenarios, how they would use it, what they would want to see in that. And um, as a result of that, Cheryl was in there and Matthew was in there. They could work their magic. And that's where these ideas for this module that you're going to see came from, from the experts themselves, which is all of you that are sitting in this session today. So you, behind the scenes, are going to set up the payment rules on a course-by-course -course basis. You're in charge of all of the information and the payments and the time of those payments for these courses. Everyone in the focus group 100% said that people registering and wanting a payment plan had to pay a deposit. Let's get a good faith effort out there to show that they're, they're committed. And there was a lot of institutional policy around this. So part of the requirements of using this module is that the registrants have to pay a deposit. And then that remaining balance is going to be due and billed according to the rules that you've set. Now, this is an optional module. And so uh, we, we keep this web link here because, you know, this 
this is going to go up on our archives, but I can tell you right today, and this is 2023, this module is $1,725 at one time cost. And I'm thinking of all the time that's going to save in people on your end. So it's going to pay for yourself, pay for itself pretty darn quickly. And when you purchase that, you're going to get some new files and um, functionality in your system for the module to work. And we're going to look at those right now. So once those files are all in place, you're going to see this new payment plan rules field. That's going to be along with all the other, this is your ACE Web Info tab. How are you going to publish? Um, when you want them to publish, your lag dates, if you're going to allow certificate, getting certificates online. So it's all in line with how this course is going to set, be set up and displayed to students in ACEWeb. And with this module, you're going to be setting up these payment plan rules. So you're going to start with that build button. And Matthew has an easy to follow step-by-step -step process and in this very first step here you're going to be telling the students how much of that remaining bill after their deposit is due by the course begin date when you see this begin date think course begin date and I'm expecting that most of you are going to require 100% of that balance to be due before taking the course but there's always some exceptions and we leave that up to you. Let's look at step two. Now you are going to be determining what leeway they have to make a payment after the course begins. And so I suppose this might be handed, and we use positive and neg negative numbers here. I kind of think lag day in here. If there's negative numbers, it's going to say they need to finish that pay uh, before the class, how many pay periods you're going to give them before the class begins, and anything positive gives them some leeway. So as I was thinking about this, I remember we used to have some really long, like six or eight week type courses, and so you might want to take some pay, you know, allow some payment installments to be made the course, but that's your step two. In step three, this is just a rounding rule. Um, if you wanted to have dollars and cents or if you want to have the full dollar there, it's up to you. And in step four, you're going to define the payment dates for each month. And in each institution probably has that. Maybe it's the first, maybe it's the 15th, maybe it's the 31st. But you can say we're wanting payments on this course on the 15th or at the end of the month on the 31st or the 30th, like we want them to make two installments that month. Now, if you're wanting to make two installments, you would just simply need to add a comma between those two dates. Cheryl, everybody seems to be following along. No questions yes, yet? no questions so far. Sounds good. All right, and the final plan here, step five, is kind of a grace period. When do you want the billing to begin after the registration and deposit have been made online. And so the two numbers that I do that were going to stick out to me are 15 and 30. 15 if you're going to do two payments per month or 30 if you're going to do one payment per month. Why? Because if you have students registering on the 13th or the 14th and your billing is the 15th, you know they're not going to appreciate because you wouldn't happen to pay that hundred dollar or whatever deposit and then the next day or two or even five be required to make that first big installment so this is we're just calling it a grace period and so once you've done this you've got those five rules in place you've got it your rules are in place and you can see the five rules you made right down here you're crying 100%. Um, I can't remember all the details right now, but 100%, zero, you know, 15th, the payments on the 30th, and you're giving a grace period of 15 days. So those rules then are summarized for you right here based on the five rules that you've already set up. Any questions at this point? 
Mm. Not seeing Not yet, any. So had I could show it kind of behind the scenes. Let's let me let me do that. Let me see if I can find my student manager right here. Let's take a look at that class that Cheryl set up for the demo. I see a question about the Zoom. Yep, yep, it's being recorded. We will get that taken care of for you. Oh dear, Cheryl, get that message. All right, this was 23, oh, and this was an application course, I believe. So let's take a look. Here's those fee setups, the registration fee, and we're going to talk about the deposit in a little bit, but here's those rules that we just set up. And so if you click the build button, I could change this to say they have to have 50% by the course date or 75. Um, I could say they could have two payment installments past the beginning date of the course. I could change this to where I don't want any rounding digits and I just want whole numbers in there. I could change this to 15 days or 30 and 15 days. And notice when I hover over, you're going to get that tool tip. So it's right there to kind of guide you through it too. And the grace period and my my uh, payment plan is set up to display on ACEWeb, which we will look at here in just a moment. We'll get back to the slideshow. All right. You are, let me get this. All right, so now let's talk about deposits. Many of you have done deposits before, but in the case of the payment plan module, our focus group all agreed there had to be a good faith deposit. So you have your registration fee for the course, as we just saw on the screen, and that's shown on the web. There's your deposit, the amount you're going to require, and it is hidden on the web. So that's going to be an important thing uh, to remember, that that needs to be hidden on the web because it's managed instead on ACEWeb in the INI settings, okay? All right, here's this INI setting that I was just talking about. It's going to be labeled deposit, and you can talk to your tech if you're needing help in setting up those INIs. Some of you here I know do that yourself. If others of you need assistance with that, your tech can help you do that. Sharon. And, yes, ma'am. There's a whole uh, help topic on setting up deposits if they need more, uh, uh, more info on that. Perfect. So, yeah. So there's a whole thing on there about deposits. So. Thank you, Cheryl. All right, here's what the student's going to see now. You've got your course set up. You've got your fee set up. Here is that $100 registration fee that's set up to display. You saw that set up in Student Manager, and the deposit fee that you're going to require is shown here because you want the student to have the option to pay, pay the full amount if they want to, that's fine, but you want others to still have the option to register for that course by selecting deposit and paying a portion of that now with the balance due before the course starts. Now, Cheryl, correct me if I'm wrong, I can feel the question, can we customize what this says here? Not on a course by course basis. Okay, but if they have specific language they want to use for those that they're setting up There's for a student message payment, yep, on the cart page that they can they can edit. Okay, yeah. I just can kind of feel that question coming through yeah. my screen. So, <laughs> so they have to check that deposit in order to show the fee for the course show what they're paying on the course, and it gives them some information of when the rest of it's going to, de to be due. So when they proceed to checkout then, this payment plan is showing up, and it is showing up according to the rules that you set. And I think, whoops, excuse me, this is a great idea here. This please split the remaining balance is kind of like by attending this course, you agree to 
the terms. And so right here they're telling you, yes, this we're going to split this up, this bill up into that proposed payment plan based on the rules that you have provided to them. Then they're going to continue with the registration process as normal um, by paying for that deposit. And in Manager, you see now there's that $100 deposit and there's the payment plans that you've set up. So you have four different billing records, which the student then will see in a little bit can choose to pay from their ACEWEB account. Some important notes, and you've heard Cheryl say this, that since these payment rules are set on a course-by-course -course basis, you can only add one payment plan to the course to the card at the time. So the students will need to enroll in a payment plan type course one at a time. And if I was a student, that wouldn't matter to me <laughs> because I'm getting the option to pay this over time. It's more convenient to me. And so I'll do that one at a time. Cheryl, do you see Marsha's question here? Do future payments automatically process or do they get billed? So what I'm hearing here is our credit card stored. Mm, no, future no, payments we are don't, not automatic. No, we don't no. do any automatic processing. So, no. Okay. Cheryl, what happens if a payment is declined? How are you, they notified? You mean, you mean if they go out to the web and make a payment? Yep. And this is, like, Jesse, you, you can uh, um, correct. Are you talking about the deposit? Are you talking about the future payments from their um, ACEWEB account or all of that, the above? <laughs> yeah. Anytime in ACEWEB, if they make a payment through ACEWEB and it gets declined, the the staff member, whoever's listed in, as the staff member gets a, an email that says that there was a decline payment. And I'm sure the payment gateway, the provider's notifying the student as well that, you know, payment was declined. Well, now that's in the, that that's depends in on the gateway payment yep. settings. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You They're can asking, set it up to do staff. that, but yeah. Yep. And there's a special setting, she just put that up there, um, that you add to the alt settings that you can mimic what student manager is doing and have it automatically assign an invoice number to those payment plan billings too. This is kind of the flip side of what I did in preferences and assigning yeah. an invoice number to all of those billing records. This is on the ACE website setting up invoice numbers then for all of the um, all of those invoices from the registrations made on ACEWEB. Yeah. And Tyler, if they miss payments, that's not anything ACEWEB can do. That's all on staff members. There's yep. nothing that ACEWEB can do to force them to make payments right. on time. Now, yeah. Tyler, what you may not know, and I anticipated this, and it and looks like we'll have time to maybe show you some things in Manager, but there is a, a preference in the pay, too, where when you log in, you get those messages of course announcements that need to be sent. You can also get, um, I want to call it uh, payment due, but invoices that still have yes. outstanding invoices. That would be one thing, or you could use the deadbeat report and look up a specific course on that. Um, we can, and we could show them how to do yep, that too. Yep. We can do that here in a little bit here. And I see yeah. some other questions coming. Someone wants to know, is there a reminder on when the payment is due on the payment plan? Well, what I'm showing you here, is this Jessica? Yeah, this is what it's gonna look like on the student side in their ACEWEB accounts in their registration history, they're able to see, of course, all the classes they're registered in, the classes they've completed, the payments, but here's the invoices that are up there for that payment plan. She's made her deposit, she's got four invoices that need to be paid, it tells the date of those, and gives her the option to pay those online. She has another course that she had billed to her too. But Cheryl, I don't know, this reminder on like student reminders, kind of like course reminders. Jessica, you're looking for a payment reminder, I think is what you're looking for. 
I yeah, don't know. We'll and I don't, put that in the think tank, but that we don't would have, have that go right in now. The wish list, yeah. Put that um, in the think tank. So continue on. We are in the questions. Keep asking those questions there, and uh, uh, I'm going to pull up managers so we can student, show yeah, some pull of up the student manager. Um, oh, some of those cool tools. Because we can, they can turn on the. Yeah. Okay, it's close. The preferences. Payment. Okay. So here's where I assign that invoice number for payment plans. Right here, show outstanding invoices on startup. Yeah, startup. So that was when one you I... start up your system, just like you get those course reminders, um, you can also see outstanding invoices. And Maxi, another very good point, she says, can we send them the email link to pay outstanding balance? And I wouldn't know why not. And if those of you don't know what that is, right here, email link to pay outstanding. They click this link. It is going to have the outstanding balance that that now, um, I have. There's one. There's one problem. Oh with boy. That. Yeah. Well, that that's sends the them to a different page. Can you go back to the PowerPoint for a minute? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. maybe. I hope you are laughing with me, everybody that's run these things before. It's like, yeah. maybe, the only, maybe. The only problem with that is, <laughs> <laughs> and, and hit, hit your back to go back to the previous page. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I have to minimize some other things here. The only problem with that is, is that you're not going to invoices, you're going to payments. So if you go to payments, they don't get to pay an invoice. They pay a, um, um, they pay the whole thing. So they would pay the whole amount for the, the whole amount due on my account. She would be paying this right here. She would not, no, not the whole 1070. It would be the whole thing for the application development seminar. Oh, all four of yeah. these. You wouldn't be paying for an invoice. Yeah. You and would pay the whole great things to take back to the next dev meeting and talk yeah. about options. Keep it coming, guys. What do you think? And so they would have to have, they would have to have a way to have a link to the invoices well, if you think of questions in the meantime, you know where to find Cheryl or me and send it, drop us a line. We can get you with the tech. You can try out this plate payment plan module, see what you think um, and get it added. I think it was, it's kind of like having another staff member that's taking care of this. Their role is to set up those payment plans and things, but we're going to take your ideas forward to the dev team too. So if you think of things, We'd love it to do this. Send those our way too. We'd love to have those ideas. So with that, have a great afternoon. It's a Friday Eve. The weekend is coming. And we will see you early October for what is new. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Thanks for popping in when talking with Cheryl and I. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right.